China has become, frankly, increasingly rich, increasingly uh, full of its own oats or rice, uh, as China has become more aggressive and has decided to act like a superpower, certainly a regional superpower. It's building up its military, it's building up its nuclear weapons, it's creating um, shore to ship very sophisticated weapons designed to keep American carriers away from defending Taiwan, if that's what what finally happens. China is continuing its large-scale military drills around the country, of course, uh, following that visit from the US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, which upset China so much. China's army command said it will now practice anti-submarine attacks and sea raids after conducting live fire exercises until yesterday. Stephen Erlanger is chief diplomatic correspondent for Europe at the New York Times and is live with us. Stephen, welcome. Thank you. Um, how concerned should we be about this, and particularly its it sort of change in flavour in terms of what they're actually doing with these drills? Well, I don't think we should be too concerned right now, but I think there's what the Chinese are doing creates precedents for the future that should make us worried, partly because Xi Jinping, who uh, this autumn wants to be named essentially emperor for life, Xi Jinping has promised to bring Taiwan back into the fold by mid-century. Now, it looks less and less likely that's going to be a peaceful operation. It's supposed to be peaceful. Mm. But if you look at Hong Kong, the whole idea of one country, two systems looks a bit hollow now. And um, there's just a feeling that uh, China is becoming a much more controlled, much more party-oriented place. So you have the problem of a little democracy, pretty good democracy, which the West recognizes as part of China. But how one makes it part of China, or can it remain on its own, is a question that's becoming more and more problematic. So what the Chinese have been doing is, is military exercises under the pretext of this Pelosi visit, which actually changed nothing, mm. um, to enter Taiwanese uh, waters carefully, but ways they haven't done, to shoot missiles over Taiwan from mainland China into Japanese waters which they have not done before, to, in a sense, create a, almost a, through exercises, a kind of naval blockade of um, Taiwan and also punish Taiwan economically. So mm. China is changing the ground rules. And with those changing ground rules, do we need a different response from the West? Um, you said you're not particularly worried by what by what China's done and how they've changed it. The US president said today that he's, quote, not worried about what they're doing. But the picture that you painted there, it sounds like the strategic ambiguity that the West has relied on for a while of, as you say, recognising Taiwan as being part of China, but not necessarily thinking any more deeply about it than that. Whether that can last now China is doing what it's doing? Well, that's a big question that Republicans particularly have in the House of Representatives. Um, the Republicans are becoming more and more intrigued by the idea of breaking this old understanding and recognizing Taiwan somehow as independent, which is not American policy. Strategic ambiguity is, is as much about the question, which is the key one, would the United States come to the military defense of Taiwan mm. should China invade it? That's the point that, that the U.S. wants to keep open, though Biden has misspoken a number of times yes. and said that the U.S. would defend Taiwan militarily. And then the White House has dragged him back and basically said, well, we're going to keep giving Taiwan arms, which is fine. That's part of the Taiwan Relations Act. But it's becoming increasingly complicated as China has become, frankly, increasingly rich, increasingly uh, full of its own oats or rice, uh, as China has become more aggressive and has decided to act like a superpower, certainly a regional superpower. It's building up its military, it's building up its nuclear weapons, it's creating um, shore to ship 
very sophisticated weapons designed to keep American carriers away from defending Taiwan, if that's what, what finally happens. So the US, I think, you know, which is a Pacific power, everyone forgets this, mm. um, and has big allies that care, like the Japanese care a lot about what's going to happen. And so do the South Koreans. The US has to figure out how to reassure its allies without forcing them to break with China, because China's too important. It's too big. And its trade relations with the rest of Asia, let alone Europe, are too important 